for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, Dixon specialist. And uh, tonight, no guest. Just the love between us. That's right. Thank Christ. What are you looking at? Look at the shirt, buddy. You know what that is? The your. That's a monogram. The your monogram on my Ace, sleeve. Ace Carolla. That's right. Custom, custom tailored shirt. Not bad, Did huh? I give that to you. Hell no, I sewed it my... No, you no yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. I've never uh, seen you wear a shirt with a collar to the studio. I know. If What's you do... Deal? Well, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, if you do Jim Rome, if you do uh, his TV show, uh, most TV shows, they give you a windbreaker with the name of the show on it, so you look like an asshole, yeah. and just a walking donkey with a sign on it yeah, now yeah. that advertises their show. It's like, hey, who's this for? Yeah. You got a C-list celebrity wearing your crappy show? On the back of my windbreaker, that's... Although... I, you should be... I was at Kilbourne last night, and they gave me a weekend vacation in Vegas. Really? Yeah, I'll show it to you. With uh, a limo and everything, it's awesome. Yeah, but it wasn't monogram. No, it was not monogram. Not okay, tailored, not all right, so... Me. I'm sure everyone else got the same thing. Here's what happened at uh, at uh, Jim Rome, which is, you, you go... I did the show twice, and they didn't do it the second time. But the first time, you go in there... And they fit you for a custom shirt. That's nice. And it's a tailored shirt guy. You know, he's he's pulling measurements. And Maybe. by the way, uh, I don't want to sound gay, but it is nice to be handled <laughs> once in a while as you're a man. gay by a man. It, anything. Anything. It, it even even touch. almost better is uh, mm. almost almost better from a man because then it's sort of minus any of the tension Sexual or stuff. energy yeah, or yeah, whatever. You're right. Yeah. It's just it's nice. I, I it's I like getting a haircut. I Some like a guy named Polly giving you a massage. I, I love it. I love it. I love when the barber, I love when he gets the straight edge out and the hot yeah. foam machine and starts lathering up the back of the neck. And We're going with this. Okay, here's my point. <laughs> I just If you just would put your hand on my knee while we're doing the show, <laughs> once in a while, just so I know you're there, yeah. instead of some disembodied voice. Right. Okay, the point is, is uh, measured up that you pick a color swatch. And uh, a month later, your shirt shows up nice with your uh, with your monochromatic. Kim ought to pick that up, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. And, and you know, if you're a guy like me, who's uh, Island Cotton, right arm is uh, three quarters of an inch longer than his left arm. It's oh, nice wow. because stuff hangs on me all all wow. weird. So. Well, why'd you wear it to the radio studio? I've never seen it in a shirt with a collar unless you just did TV. Well, here's what happened: the shirt was out because I was wearing it. Uh, why the hell was the shirt out? First oh, the Kimmel shirt. Show. No, shirt was out because I did something for MTV uh, today, uh, which is uh, one of those list shows, yeah. you know, <laughs> where you sit there and some guy goes, what'd yeah. you think it's about J-Lo? J-Lo? And, no, this was MTV. And uh, so I, I just wore a decent shirt for that. And then, as you know, I have momentum with apparel. Once something's out, it's, it's used. Three months. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see the shirt again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's okay. Not, and then what, the, Where are we? You're not going to put this shirt in the hamper, are you? No. Yeah. No. This, that would be that would be uh, sinful. This is uh, this is not going to be used. By the way, <laughs> my my wife's become a detective. She's like, <laughs> she says, "Have you been beating off?" I st- uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. A, not how does that conversation off. get started? She's brought. She's, so brought you, it she's up. cooking the pasta. <laughs> and I'm even jacking off. I, I said, no, 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 no. Why? Why? What'd you find? You know? And she's like, I saw your, <laughs> I saw your pants on the on the living room floor when I came down this morning. And why were your pants? Why are your pants off? I said, Oh my God! I, I always take my pants off. You, you do? Now you know. You know it's great. It's great about being a guy. You're so much smarter than women. While she was talking to me, I was skipping rope. And I was wearing a pair of shorts, yeah. and I and 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 she goes, "What do you mean? Why are you taking your pants off? What do you mean you always take your pants off? I'm not wearing my pants now, am I?" She said, well, I guess not. I said, All right then. So as long as you're not wearing pants, it's out muscle. So, that's right. Oh my god. Uh, that's right. But she didn't check the VCR or anything, though, right? No, no. no, she's, no. She, she keeps she, an eye she, open. She really doesn't want to know. She doesn't want to know. No. 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 I mean, it has been. It's been a while. For what? That you've touched? Yeah. yeah. No, me. It's been a while since I've had it myself. Me time. Yeah. 30, Arma- 24 hours? I, I said a while, not a lifetime. Okay, all right, good. Armando? Yeah? You're 16. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, how What's you guys up? doing tonight? Good. All right, um, my question is, um, I'm in a long-distance relationship right now, right? We were yeah. together for a year. I moved a year in, right? 
a year after that I moved. It's been probably eight, 11, 10 months already, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I it's a lot of head games and stuff with this girl. And well, I was wondering, of, like, no, Wait, wait. You're not even following this, are you? Because you would have huh? stopped him already. Who, me? Yeah. No, I was focusing on I why know. I don't have any goddamn coffee. All right. All right. And why this is a, an issue three times. Uh, All right, yeah. Okay. Lauren Coffee. Listen, Armando, you've yeah. been away from this girl for 11 months. Uh-huh. How far away are you? Um, about 200 miles. And do you ever see each other? Yeah. How often? Um, probably once a month. No. Uh, it's, 16. It's 16 that, that's once a year. It's 16. Yeah, it's once a year, and it's, it's 10,000 miles away. Yeah. You, you don't, don't do that to yourself. It's over. The, the head games are all about trying to cling to a relationship that's not working. It's normal. It's supposed to happen. Relationships of your age is not supposed to go forever. And one of the reasons they end is proximity. Yeah. It's all right. It's fine. You'll be fine. I guarantee it. All right. You won't. You won't obsess and 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 linger for a couple of years the way Adam did. And you know. Mm. No, no, it ain't no. over. No. Oh, you're still having trouble. No, no. It's like Vietnam yeah, for a lot of people. I've been telling you, Doctor Therapist, about that's well that masturbation. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, Armando. Yeah. Is uh, is uh, did the guys uh, are the guys once in a while you run into some old guy named Army? Huh? Is that Armando? What is that happened? Short for Armando? Yeah, I don't think it's short for Armando. Armando, it's um. Do you I get don't... Army? No. Uh-uh. Have yeah, you ever I... heard of that? No. I heard of Armand, the French way. But, right, but no, no, no Army. <laughs> no. Nah. Okay. No satisfaction, Adam. Come on. Never, never no. any. But no. like Army Archer, what? What's his? His name is an Army. It's probably some, you know, Archimedes or something. You know, something probably really long. There's a couple of armies out yeah. there, though, and I think it's probably, it if, if not Armando, what? Somebody call and tell us. <sighs> right. It's never going to happen. Of course. Joel? Hey. Hey. What's army short for? The name army. Well, gosh, um... I know about Dick Army. Uh, that's a terrible... Yeah, that's a last name. Terrible last comeback, name. yeah. No, it's not, because that's no, where my head went, too, but it's <laughs> last name. I don't know. You make I, I knew better to open my mouth. I knew better to open my mouth. I kind of give it that biblical twist, you know? Yeah, I knew. I knew. There were, I thought of it the other day, and I don't think it's Armando, but I'm, we'll get Maybe Armageddon. Armageddon. It's like a goth name. Joel, your head works exactly like mine. <laughs> you should, those those you are the should, thoughts that scrolled through my head. You should put a bullet in it quickly. What's going on? Uh, well, you got me really interested in reading your book, but I'm blind, and I want to see if I can talk you into, like, maybe uh, sending me a digital copy of it, or if it's going to be on audio tape or something. I mean, a digital copy mean me reading it? Yeah, yeah, I put it in my computer, and my computer reads to me. You know, I would absolutely love to do that. Oh, I... wait a minute. That's different than what he's talking about. What? He, well, said, he talking? said digital copy, and you said... You mean me reading it? And he said, yeah, I put it in my computer, and my computer reads it. Oh. Yeah, talk to me. A digital co- copy Ooh. of it means your, your computer would decipher it. Uh, how do you, is that? Well, yeah, that's how it works. You, it's like a, a, you plug it into, like, Microsoft Word or something, and the, you hit a button, and it reads the whole document to me. Wow, that's and awesome. And your, your computer is probably much more animated than Dr. Drew would be if he was reading it. <laughs> much finer actor. Well, you know, the first question everybody asked me is... I banged my first nurse in 1971. What's that, Joel? It was good. It actually does it? kind of, it sounds almost as nasal as Adam, actually. My your voice? Com- no, your computer. Drew, computer. you're talking oh, about yeah. the computer. All right. It's a, it has the monotone of Drew and the, the nasalness of Adam. It's like I'm at home when I'm listening to you guys. Really? Can you can you fire it up? Where is it? Uh, I have it upstairs. I could go do it. You know, Wait, is it going to take you like an hour and 45 minutes to get upstairs? No, it'll take me oh, a minute or two. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> How do you get upstairs? That- do you crawl? <laughs> no? Are you, can you move around okay? Oh, well, yeah. I'm fine. I got a lot of crap in the way, but, you know. Uh, two stories just sounds like trouble when you're blind. Like, I, I see fine in two stories is trouble when you drink a lot. Dust, dust <laughs> the pants on the floor of the living room. Right. I don't I don't I, need that. I don't need being encumbered. Well, you know, I remember stories. a couple months ago you were talking about, uh, was it Molly Ringwald's dad and, and taking the butts and stuff? <sighs> What? And I was thinking that, you know, gosh, you know, this is a guy complaining about not being able to take the bus and he can beat off, drink coffee, and drive at the same time. Yeah, and have, and it have. Seems, it seems like a great iniquity to me. Well, well hold on a second. Go yeah. upstairs, find that computer. Molly Ringwald's dad is blind. Oh, that's right. I remember this, yes. And, I mean, he ain't faking because I've thrown fake punches at him. Yeah. And he don't move. Either he's got nerves of steel or he's blind. Because, I, I mean, I've done serious combos on him and, and nothing. And even, you know, and then downstairs, nothing. And sure uh, appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. And so this guy, so he's always been blind. Right? He's been blind since he was a kid. 
And uh, I used to, I used to see him when I was a kid because they grew up down the street, and he'd be he'd be trekking off to work, yeah. and he'd head out of the house, walk right onto Laurel Canyon, main one of the busiest streets in the valley, and not one of the nicest ones either. Uh, truck right down. Uh, Laurel Canyon, head over to Chandler and sit down and wait for the bus. Wow. And uh, that was a couple of city blocks. Grab the bus, take the bus up to the Van Nuys Courthouse. Hmm. Let him ride off, jump off somewhere, uh, you know, uh, Chandler and uh, Van Nuys Boulevard and truck another five blocks. So I walked in the courthouse. Meanwhile, like like you walking with a, with a bucket over your head. Yeah. Believe that? Meanwhile, you can't get across the street to the high school. Well, I could. I just, I don't, there's no, learning going on there. I don't want to be there. But, uh, yeah, it is amazing uh, what you can do. Joel? Yeah, here we are. Are right, you so, at the computer? Yeah, here it is. I'm in Microsoft Outlook. I'm going to go down to a couple of the, the emails I have. How do you know where you are? I mean, maybe you're, maybe you're standing in front of a cigarette machine or something. Uh-oh. Can you hear that? That sound like Drew. So, yeah, it, was a little, it was a little choppy. Can you, can you yeah, play it? Yeah, well, you're... It's like, uh, it is real kind of rapid, and I have it sped up a little bit. I could slow it down if you want. Slow it down just a hair. All right. Speed. Auditory reading. How's that? Oh, that's that's great. It's just like Grandpa reading to you when you're in bed. Do you have any idea what it's saying? Underwater with bubbling. This conversation yeah. can serve no purpose. All right, Joel, here's the deal. Uh, yeah. I, I unfortunately, I, I don't own the rights to these kinds of things. Contact Reagan Books through HarperCollins. I, I guarantee you they'll have something like this for you. And yeah, well, there are loopholes in the law about, uh, you know, giving people who can't read print books, you know, access to those kind of things. I'm sure I've they will have a lot of success with authors before. I'd be oh, delighted. yeah. I'd be delighted if I, if I had anything like this, but... Uh, you want to, you know, no, listen. If if they're building like uh, handicap ramps uh, up to uh, so guys can get lap dances at strip joints and stuff, believe me, you can get one of these books. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so listen. Do you work? Um, well, I'm a student right now. I was I worked for about six or seven years. Yeah. Have you been career. blind? Have you been blind your whole life? Since I was seven, so about twenty some years. What happened? I, I was born with retinoblastoma, and, uh, yeah. you know, I had radiation therapy and stuff, and my eyes never really worked well, and it just kind of gave out, you know? Bilateral. Yeah. See, you know, you always... Bilateral, I always, yeah. I always want it to be some sort of, you know, something in the lab exploded. Do you, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's always well, the same I, old... I get a little sort of boring. head injuries and things. So. I'm getting to the age where I could tell people it was Desert Storm, and I get a little mileage out of that sometimes. But. Smart. Smart, yeah. That, that works. Phosphorus bomb went off in your bunker. You got the worst of it because you dove on three of your guys trying to protect them. They protect came them. off unhurt. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then how are chicks? Are they okay? Uh, surprisingly good, actually. Yeah, you gotta. I, I was really surprised. Sometimes it uh, it helps a little, you know. Ooh, you it's kind of have that wounded, wounded animal thing, you know. Well, I mean, if you, if you look at it this way, it, you can't be looking at other girls. Is it is it is a twenty four year old? <laughs> As a 24-year-old... Yeah, I have the old... advantage of not being able to look at all the porn on the Internet, I guess. Oh, uh, oh Adam, Adam yeah. killed himself. So, you know, I, it, in, for me, it's suffering, but, you know, all, all the other women think it's great, you know. As a 24-year-old guy who's going to school, you have a little bit of an in. Hmm? Now, you may not look at it as an in, but it's an icebreaker. It's something. It's all you need is something. It's a little bit of the guy in jail stuff, too. You know, it's a little guy sort of contained. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to. He's, he, no, no date rape gonna go on on the first uh, night. You just, uh, what's he gonna do? The, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not that, not that he wouldn't try. Yeah, no, yeah. It, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not that uh, you know, handy capable doesn't also include rape. Right. Yes. I believe it does. What's well, you know? It's, it's, Whatever they yeah. can do, everything we can do. Same. You, you got to lump rape onto that, right? But. And so, Joel, not saying that you couldn't rape with the best of them, or rape as good as the guy who had twenty twenty or, vision, or if you needed rape accessible, right ramps and equipment <laughs> right. and things. Yeah. And it's it's not. And by the way, rape uh, is not is not a sexual crime. It's it's hate an act. Crime, it's crime. it's an act violence, of violence. violence yeah, think, of but you come at the end. <laughs> but but it's violent. It's like a violent. It's no different than if I same. if I stabbed same. you with a knife same. Same. and then came on you. <laughs> Or or held up a liquor store, or shot you, and then came. But it's the same. You know what I'm saying? It's not a sexual thing. 
It'd just be like if I stole some jewels and and came. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. It's the same. You see what I'm saying, Drew? Same. No different. Same. Same exact thing. I get you. No I different you. I than arson, but I come. Do you see what I'm saying? Or uh, vehicular manslaughter, <laughs> but I come in my pants when I run you over. It's it's the same. It's like any crime. It's just you, you know, come at it's, the it's end. It's so much the same. You don't even have to do that because it's not a sexual thing. It's you, not it's sexual. Violence. It's it's a violent <laughs> crime. That you just you just jizz when you're done, and that's how you know you're done. But that's but it's but it's not it's not a sexual crime. That's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Okay, so as long as we're clear on that. All right, Joel's good people. <laughs> Drew, do you understand it'd be no different than if you left your laptop computer unattended at the airport? I hear McGruff right now. I, I made off with it, it, but came in my pants as I was running with your computer. All right, McGruff the Grandel. <laughs> All right. All right. So you see my point. Yeah, I got it. Got you. Right. With you. Wow, where do you keep your wallet? <laughs> where do you um, hold on where, what is that what, what do you think what the what's the answer to that McGruff well, I where do you it, keep your wallet I keep it up it. your ass yeah, you mutt I keep it on a stick planted in my lawn <laughs> what do you mean where I keep my wallet course, keep my course. goddamn pants you retarded dog and by the way do we, is, that, is, that, is, is, is this the collective IQ of this nation that we need a dog mascot to tell us about crime yes of course. how much crime fighting do dogs do not minimal. No, you're the one that attacked you. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're right out there. You're right. Lisa. Yeah. 20, what's going on? Uh, how you doing? I uh, Good. Calling up. I listen to your show all the time. I think you guys are both great. Thanks, Lisa. But, uh, yeah, I found out in June that my mom has six months to live, mm -mm. and uh, she's dying of a disease that she has, Huntington's chorea. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeesh. What? Uh, uh, you know, that's, well, go ahead. I mean, that's a hereditary disorder. She's, yep. she's your biological mom? Yeah. Go ahead. And uh, she never really been a mother to me, but she's always like my little buddy, and I've always been really close to her, you know. Like, so I'm really upset about that. Of and uh, my dad was always a really bad alcoholic, yeah. and uh, he used to like beat us, beat all of us. He's very violent. He uh, fabulous, fabulous. He used to like beat her really bad, beat and I think too. that might have helped make the disease go a little bit quicker. No, no. And uh, no. also. I'm sorry. I can't really... Well, well hold that. on one second. What do you mean she was like your buddy? We well, she was never really a mother because of her disease. She's kind of there's a nuts and like... There's a, I'm sorry, uh, but she's like retarded in a sense. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a, they, and, they, uh, get, they get so very, she's very never, strange. She's never really been there, you know, but she was always, you know, like my little buddy. I used to kid around with her and stuff, and mm -hmm. I watched her and stuff, you know. She's been, been that way since you were born. Uh, I don't it's know since I was later. born, but mm -hmm. as long as I can remember, since I was like eight, maybe. Is there Huntington's that's non Korea, Huntington's is, Korea. Well, Huntington's disease is Huntington's Korea. It's the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now this is a hereditary thing. Drew is saying. Mm -hmm. Autosomal dominant. Yeah. Have you been checked for it? Hmm. I think. Uh, I don't know if you guys are talking to me, but have you sorry. Been, have you been checked for it, Lisa? Lisa. No, it's the the, the phone thing. Here. Damn phone cutting out, and everyone else can hear her, but us. Nope. 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 No, nobody else can hear. But us. she I just, just got cut off, or what? Hello, Le Lisa. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Have you been checked for this disease? I don't want to be checked because if you get checked, or you know, you don't have no reason to live. Smart. You no, know, because you know what's going to happen to you. Okay. And uh, right. th Adam's going to love this, but uh, I'm raising my little brother and my little sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so since I'm living with my father, I've always, you know, I always wanted to like hurt him really a lot because. I never really worked out those issues, sure. but uh, I don't have the money for therapy now. Okay. And there's, I don't, I can't really talk to people anyways. I'm only right. talking to you because you know you guys are over the phone. Okay. Right. But uh, I know I have like a really lot of issues, and actually I'm planning on going on vacation to try to figure some things out. Okay. But uh, like my little brother's three, and my little yeah. sister's one and a half. Yeah. And my other sister's fifteen. Okay. Are these all from this guy, from the abusive alcoholic guy? Yeah. Are you leaving them with him? Uh, he, well, when I'm not there, like, because I work two jobs, when I'm not there, my 15-year-old sister usually gets stuck with the kids, so, like... Wow, Lisa, my God. It's just, All right, hold on, hold on a second. Let me uh, convene with Drew for a second. 
I mean, this is like okay, uh, what a, this what, is like a Charles Dickens novel. You know what I mean? I, I know. I was just thinking, what what century are we tiny in? Tiny Tim, yeah. Um, w okay, so what are the chances if I have Huntington's Korea that my kid has Huntington's Korea? I think it's like fifty percent. Fifty percent. I think so. So or maybe yeah, so that's a quarter. It's a half. Half. Oh, so now we're oh we're just going by hundred. I think it's I, I you okay. have to look it all up. Okay, so there's there's a, there's a likelihood. Yeah. And there's a likelihood that uh, one of, if not more, of these kids yeah. has it. And there's different manifestations. I've I've seen I've cared for patients with this disorder. There's sort of different. It can be milder or more severe, this kind of thing. Now, is there anything that you can do about it other than uh, wait for it to show itself? Not really. No, not that I'm aware of. And there's there's medication for some of the mental status problems. They get it, weird. You know, if it's not problems. showing itself, at 20, can you that's detect a good sign. it? That's good. Yeah, yes, I believe there are ways to test for it, genetic testing. All right. But the fact that she doesn't have it by 20 is a pretty good sign. But it, 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 is there any reason to check for it other than, well, let's say you starting a family, perhaps, right. or that, something, that's or why you, for genetic like driving a school bus or something? Right. Uh, but other and, than that, and if, it's, you, if you start having funny neurologic symptoms, you want to right. Know, is but that it's, it's not it's else? not like other things where it's uh, I don't know breast cancer or something no. where you're at a high risk and you're kidding yourself. You should get in there. Take the breast. It out. doesn't doesn't matter. No. Okay. Well, that's not that I'm aware. I know certainly no expert in this area, but not that I'm aware. Right. Uh, where is this, Lisa? Yeah. So, Lisa. Yeah. Where are you going on vacation, by the way? I'm thinking I'm just going to go get a motel room, get away from everybody for a little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. just go to national parks, you know, go hiking a little bit, try to clear sure. my mind. Gettysburg. You got some money saved up? Uh, not much. That's why I figure I'll get like a little motel room, you know. You going alone? Yeah. You got a boyfriend? No. No, just single. Yeah. Well, like I said, I spend all my time with the kids and sport. sure, mm. sure. <laughs> all right. So, uh, listen, you're you're much stronger than uh, any other twenty year old. We've it was your age. Yeah. yeah, these our 20-year-olds are, you know, they're drinking wine coolers, and uh, they want to know the difference between uh, IUD and uh, uh, IOU. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you, yeah, I'm sorry you've been through what you've been through. I'm sorry for what happened to your mom. I do worry about your younger brothers and sisters. I do worry about your dad being and around, uh, being around. Is, is he controlled his drinking at all? I'm sorry. I didn't catch on the last part. Right, Lisa, one thing you can do. That's free, and that you're will help you. You're bouncing out completely. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, you're really low. All right. Go to Al-Anon. That's something you can do for free. Do that. That You're looking for things you can do. That's something you can do. It's free. Get a sponsor. You can work some of these things out. All right. Al-Anon. 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 Or, or adult, ACA, Adult Children of Alcoholics. Okay. Like All right. I'm going to get myself a coffee. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Good times. I know. Uh, junior, 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 junior producer Lauren's mad as I uh, brought the coffee thing up. But Why? Uh, I don't know. Look, look, here's the problem. I know everyone around here thinks I'm an asshole. I don't care. I I uh, may not have brought you this. Seem like you do. I, don't, I understand. I may I'm not have shocked. brought. I may not have brought this up before, but I need a coffee. Yeah, I know. And I need it sometime before ten. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's all I need. I don't know, and maybe it's my fault because it hasn't been discussed. Or maybe it's been brought up several hundred times. Either way, that's it. That's what needs to happen. If that makes me a prick, then I'm a prick. All right, I'm going to go uh, fetch that. Drew, you want to warm up, buddy? Sure, I'll go. Hey, ahead. you're a prick. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let's go back to the phones and speak to Tiffany, who's 20. Tiffany? Tiffany? Yeah. What's up? Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 20 years old, and I've been sexually active for a few years. But the thing is, is like, while I'm having sex, I don't enjoy it as much as I want to. Like, I crave it so much beforehand, but, like, when I'm doing it, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Do, is Does that make a, sense? Is this with somebody you care about or just randomly, or what's the situation? It's randomly. Have you ever had a relationship? Um, yeah, I've had a couple. I'm just really picky. <laughs> So I always end up breaking but up with someone. You're not that picky because you're just having sex with meaningless sex with random guys, though, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, 
right. Well, thanks Except for, for that. To it. Except for that. Yeah. And, and then the relationships, how was the sex with those couple guys? Um, with one of them, to be honest, he was the guy that I actually regret going out with ever. He was actually the only good that I only person that I actually enjoyed having sex with. And but why did you regret? <laughs> Adam, I know where this is going. Well, and, maybe. Yeah. And why do you regret going out with him? Uh, there's actually a lot of reasons. He was really, he abusive. was a really jealous person. He ended up having a huge crush on my best friend. And but he was abusive. He wasn't really abusive. He just. Mm. I'm not getting like uh, attitude wise. Yeah. He was verbally abusive. A holes are better in the sack. I mean, let, let's face it; they're they're better at almost everything. It's a sad <laughs> fact. It's the fact that nicer you are, the worse you are at stuff. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't agree. matter whether it's you know sports, business. It, it, it doesn't matter. The nicer a guy is, the the worse he is at everything. Not everything. Most everything. John Ritter was good at acting and being loved by everybody. But he was he was a prick. He was a prick. People yeah, don't know that, that about him. That. Okay, he was a good guy. Yeah, but let's see. Okay, that's why, by the way, he is held up as an example of one of the very few guys that was a very humble guy, very nice guy, and a very talented guy. There's a handful of the guys. The rest are just talented pricks or talentless pricks. More yeah. Thank you. But, Tiffany, look, I, I would still say that she probably had an abusive dad, and this guy was a sign of strength to her. And these guys that symbolize or seem I, to be I'm so just, strong become the abusers. I'm just getting, uh, I'm getting absent dad. Uh, so where was your dad? My dad? Growing up. Wait, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Your dad. Um, I'm actually living with my stepdad right now. My real dad lives in Missouri. And how? And I'm moving out there in... Um, after Christmas. Why did he leave? Um, he was an alcoholic and he was abusive, and so my mom left him when go. I was a baby. Mm. Where's my bourbon? There Physically abusive. Yeah, my mom is almost practically blind. Like, she can't see unless she wears her contacts, and she has scars and everything from him. <laughs> from him belting on her. I love but, people giggle at the end of these horror well, stories. Just, you got, you got a well, blind because, mom like, who I, still shows the can... scars of a beating of a bad marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's how you say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah uh, but uh, he wasn't abusive to you. No, I actually just met him um, a few years ago for the first time. Yeah, why would you move out to where, where did you say it was in Wyoming? What? Missouri. Missouri. <laughs> why would you move out to Missouri if the abusive dad is out in Missouri? He's not abusive anymore. He used to he used to be into drugs and alcohol and all that, and he's nothing like that anymore. Uh, but, but why are you chasing this dream? I mean, the guy moved out of your life many years ago. He abandoned you. This no, is, by my the way, mom actually left him. He's tried to get a hold of it's me. Not his yeah, fault. Yeah, not yeah. his fault that he yeah. beat her up like that. She left him. Yeah. Remember that, right. Adam? Oh no, I totally understand that. Like we, me and my mom get in a huge fight about it all the time. <laughs> uh, okay, what about your poor stepdad? Um, he's. Great. I love him to death. I consider He's him more nice my father. the nice guy that she doesn't get turned anything. on by. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> yeah. Not even. Uh, no, but I mean it's symbolically. No. Right. Okay. All right. Look, I, I don't know if I, first off, I don't know if I like anyone moving to Missouri. <laughs> but uh, to reunite with abusive stepdad or, or ex-abusive dad. Well, that's not the reason why dad. I'm moving out there. Look, all right. First of all, is he in recovery now, your dad, your biological yeah. dad? He's in recovery. Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't. He doesn't drink. Well, he does drink every now and then, but nothing like Tiffany. He do to. not go near this guy. You are gonna. You are walking into a uh, the hornet's nest. Uh, yeah, you, you are really getting into trouble here. And, well, but, and, and I never really said I was going to live with him. <laughs> well, I'm we immediately picked up on this dream that you have of reuniting with him, and you're fighting with your mom about that fact. This is a bad, bad idea, and you're recreating that same trauma in your relationships. And the way human brains work is, are, that when you've been traumatized badly in childhood, that wiring is left behind as an imprint on the brain that becomes a source of attraction and arousal in adolescence. Those then guys that represent that dad become the most attractive things to you. And, of course, then sexually also, you're only sort of into that. Hmm. That's not good. That's not a good sign. And then you're, f you're, you're in massive denial about the fact that you're sort of f f going after this fantasy. We picked up on that immediately. Uh, okay, but here's just to get back to her question, which is the sex isn't as good as you think it's going to be because you're, you're bouncing she around. She can't have intimacy. She, that's why. All right. Find a guy. Have an intimate relationship. She can't. Okay. She, get some therapy. Get some therapy. Thank you. Have an intimate relationship. And then... You'll, you'll probably find that work out, yeah. consistency. Uh, it, it, what's interesting, though, is even these people that have therapy still 
they have to sort of deny themselves the super arousing guys. They still they still are always still ultra aroused by that bad guy. Right. That's still that the imprint is left behind, but they can have more satisfying experiences with somebody decent. I'm telling you, I never met a woman that didn't like a little uh, rough trade, as I call it. Is know? this back to the rape discussion? No, no. Yeah. Little little tug of the hair, little tap on the ass. No matter what, they all love it. <laughs> David, except for my mom. She don't hey like guys, uh, what's up? She don't like anything. She doesn't. Am I on now? Had sex. Uh, I'm yeah. Okay. You're, sorry. you're 24. What's up? Yes. Uh, first off, love the show. Favorite show out of all the shows I watch or listen to. Thanks. Um, but uh, my question is. Uh, my roommate has been using my computer uh, a lot for the past few days. And a couple of days ago, I found some sort of weird, or kind of weird, like, porn on there. Mm. And uh, I assume he must have downloaded it, forgot to delete it, something like that. And I was just curious as to what this means about him, that he likes this kind of porn, which is a little bit strange. What is it? It's just it's stuff with older women, which is, you know, whatever. And then some stuff with, like, pregnant women, which is... To me, kind of very bizarre, and uh, you know, I'm not worried about it. He's a good guy. Let me let me ask you something, Joe. Sure. Mm. And uh, David, um, yes. <clears throat> first off, I'm wondering about the guys who like the older women and like the old porn because it is. I've seen the magazines. Uh, there's like how old? Uh, there's there's one called uh, Fifty and Effable. Nice. It's <laughs> it's all spelled out though. That's good. And then there's ones called uh, What Grandpa Used to Beat Off To. And that's all these older, older broads, right? Now, here's the question. If you like older women, that's great. And you like older porn, that's great. Eventually, you'll become that age. Do, do they keep pushing up? Now, you, as you get in your 60s, they get 100, 114. No, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't if, know you guys. like older women, don't you? Yeah. You're 62. Yeah, if I know men, he'll start liking 12-year-olds. Snap back and yeah. go maybe, maybe yeah. nine. Yeah, if I know men. Okay, I'm just saying, and by the way... Uh, you know, we make fun of these guys. This is a nice blessing. I mean, uh, I'm going to be, you know, the rest of my life, I'm going to be beating off the ninth year olds and looking at my wife getting older every day. <laughs> the, these guys, they're, they're they can't wait till their wife gets in the mid-50s. Yeah, it's good. You're you right. Think about that. You're right. And, and then the guys who like fat chicks got the world by the <laughs> tail. They, that's just their oyster. The world is their oyster. And a man, if you like fat old chicks, oh, you're in. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, imagine that combo. What you got pick of the litter. Way? You're like, you're like Prince Charles. You just, you, you just, you're, you're royalty. You just want to, hey, I'll take you. Hey, yeah, fatty, old, yeah, fatty, postmenopausal, yeah, morbidly, morbidly obese, yeah, in the van, and bring your fat friends, your fat old friends. Here we go. That's it. Wherever you want, you could nail fat old celebrities. Like, it doesn't matter how big you are. This guy could be uh, cleaning Fields. carpets and be twenty. And get Tony Fields. Pow. <laughs> Toady Fields. <laughs> no one knows a Toady Fields. I thought you like that. All right, uh, David. Yes. And he likes the pregnant women too, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, you know, older women. That... None of that is crazy, bizarro stuff. It, yeah. I wonder if he put somebody in there to sort of sabotage you. <laughs> you know, well, it's possible, you but it was just it was on a random sort of place in the hard drive, and I thought. All right. Well, mm -hmm. do, do you guys? Is he weird other than this? No, he's, he's a real good guy, and I mean, mm. I'm not worried about him being some weirdo or anything. It's just like, yeah. it's total like, curiosity, just kind of non right. my mind. Yeah, that's his thing. Whatever. Yeah. That's his yeah. thing. He's fine. I guess that's another thing, that. That another sort of uh, advantage if you're attracted to pregnant women, too, right? You Except, mean if your wife gets, uh, yeah. if you knock your wife up? Yeah, that's yeah. Fun. I mean, it's right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know so much about mean, that, because that's he's a not, phase. But, yeah, it also doesn't mean he's not attracted during... Non parad times. I'm just saying liking old women is like uh like like being a collector of uh, mid eighties cars with high mileage on them. You know what I mean? You can get them get them cheap and nobody nobody haggles with you too much. No right. problem. No one's gonna steal them, just leave them around, no big deal. Just dump a little oil in them and drive. <laughs> Did, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. All right. But Good. they do break down. Good times. They break down. <laughs> I gotta get into those older women, Drew. Some what, someday. Okay. Well, uh, and again, when 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 does it stop? If you're if you let's just say you've just had a serious thing for older chicks your whole life. Yeah. What if you're ninety? Yeah. Well, let's not go that far. But let's just say you're now in your forties, mm -hmm. and, and an older woman can't be five years older than you. No. 
She just has to keep sliding. She has to stay constantly out ahead of you like 15, 20 years. Well, these guys aren't into women in their 40s. They're into women in their 50s and 60s. Yeah. And that... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, uh, by the way, uh, how far south your life has to go where, as a woman of 62, it's like, hey, I got a photo shoot. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, like, like well, you, you go to the McDonald's and see the codger behind the counter warming up the coffee, and you think, oh, Christ, what the hell happened here? Yeah. What happened? What but, went terribly wrong here? But it's the imagine same. the guy's, the, the, the chick that's getting naked now. It's probably the same one that was doing it when she was... 30 but didn't have quite the same range of opportunities you know what i'm saying right because all she was was an ugly 29 year old now now once she's, again she's 63 maybe Who cares? it's diabolical right okay let's act that stuff out with impunity see this is why we have to talk things out <laughs> we'll uh take a quick break we'll be right back Love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. I'm tired from talking during the break. <laughs> Let's <laughs> just take this segment off, Drew. <laughs> well, I, I, I think we, I would love to do a show. Just uh, Love Line breaks. Some of the best stuff goes on then. Adam goes on um, rants. A <laughs> lot, lot more of the F word than I think people think comes out of your mouth. Hmm. Noticing that tonight. That's why I should be commended for not actually using it on the air. Yep, you're right. And here's the thing. Everyone says, oh, well, I just, I'm used to using it. Right. Like, our listeners would work it in if they're, you know, they could be speaking to the, the queen the and they would use the F word. <laughs> because, like, oh, hey, hey Sorry. pardon me, you're a effing pontiff, <laughs> but uh, that's the way I speak. I couldn't help. Yeah, you can help. You just, you have to listen. you got to pay attention. Yeah, pay attention. Hmm. Carly? Hello? You're uh, you're 20. Yeah. Oh my What's gosh, it? I love you so much. I can't even believe I want. I've been Thanks. listening to you since I was like 14. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> What's and up? What's happening? Um. Well, I've never been in a real relationship before. I've only ever had casual sex and like just random like hookups, and it's why getting think, like really old. Why do you think and, you've not had a relationship? What's the problem? What? Why do you think that's the case? Why haven't you been able to have a relationship? If you've wanted one, why can't you have one? Um, I don't know. I I think I have like walls that I like. like where do those like, Where do those come from? Um, I don't know. What do you mean walls? Like you push sound, like <laughs> kind of like I'm kind of like like sequester myself off from like. A relationship. I think maybe because right. I'm afraid of getting hurt. And where did that? Where have you been no, hurt? Oh, let's just get to it. Your dad split, or it was horrible, no. or what happened? No, my parents were together. Is your dad good? Do you like him? Yeah, yeah, I love my dad. I mean, he's Irish and a alcoholic. He's really stubborn, and but he's like a good dad. Is he an alcoholic? Uh, no. No. Okay. All right. So. I don't know. What do you mean? You love him very much, but he's Irish and he's stubborn. What, what does, does that mean? mean? <laughs> well, he's just, we're complete, absolute opposite. I, I love the way people just cover, cover, cover. They just want to get I know. Good. I know. What am what, I covering? It's like I'm on a, or everything's a first date and we're trying to get a blow job here. <laughs> hey, baby. Well, oh, no, no. Junior college. What? Oh, Hispanic studies. That's interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Very, very interesting. Enough. Can I have my BJ now? Uh, we got to talk. Okay, we'll keep talking. You do what? Oh, your cat. Your cat talks to you, or he thinks he thinks he's a dog. Oh, he thinks he's a person. Interesting. He thinks he's. How do you know he's okay? Because he does. He knows what you're thinking. Fantastic. Okay, can I have my BJ now? There's more. There's more. You want to talk about cheerleading camp from nine years ago? That's great. Oh, Tammy was a bitch, was she? A jealous. I understand. Can I have a I'm BJ sorry. now? What are you trying to get at here? You think my dad's like a bad guy? Well, no, not as I, a bad person, but he was he abusive or uh, rageful or something? What do you mean he's stubborn? What does that mean? You were doing um, different. What would happen? There's, like, he, so many things that happen. I don't know. We, we oh, get in well, fights uh, all the time. Did he ever hit you? Oh, never. <clears throat> he never hit you, but you'd have these sort of verbal fights? Yeah. Did he ever kick you out of the house or anything? Um, like that? A couple times. He kicked you out of the house. 
Yeah. Okay, so, so dad's an a hole. Well, probably. Sorry. Sorry, but he is. Maybe Carly is too. But look, uh, you, you guys, you guys had a tumultuous relationship, you and your father. Yeah, but we still get along. Okay, you get along. All right, I'm, I'm putting her on hold because I'm tired of uh, her disagreeing. Uh, she she had a, uh, a charged relationship with abusive. her father. Abusive. Well, I don't know if it's abusive. Oh yes. Listen, I've known her for two minutes. I want to abuse her. That's she's angry, and you know what that means. That means she's wrong, and I'm no, right. No, it means she's an abuse victim. You, they evoke that in you like crazy. That's true. I can always tell when I when I want to smack somebody. Well, it means someone was smacking them before yeah, me. That's exactly it's right. It's like they warmed them up for me. It's they, they, they are that victim. They set the table. They set the table, and you just knocked everything over. All right. So uh, Carly is in a lot of denial. She's sort of angry about it, and I think she's angry that anyone who goes scratching around or poking around. Right. Men make that. her look at these things. <clears throat> oh, he's, he's a great guy. He, I'm sure, yes, you love your dad. I get that. But there has been some very serious dysfunction in your relationship with him. As such, it's been painful, and the possibility of future intimacy or any intimacy means pain. So you avoid it. All right. Natural enough. Good. If you want to have that in your life, you're going to have to do a little work. Yeah. That's it. All right. Have and I would bet that was an alcoholic, too. I bet that. But money. Irish guy. Come on. Rageful Irish guy. Nah, Ask next me. thing you know, you're going to tell me American Indian string. <laughs> Jesse? Yeah. You're 23? Yeah. What's up? Well, uh, my psychiatrist is prescribing medication to my father. It's called Ambien. He takes way too much of it. I to your father? Huh? He's prescribing... Ambien to your father. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. He takes way too much of it. How do you know how much he takes? Uh, well, I've watched him around the house. My mom counts his pills. And how many is he taking? He takes three to four milligrams a day. Ooh. How many? Three to four that? pills a day. You mean? Yeah. Ooh. And that's, that's a buzz. Forty, 40 milligrams. Buzz. You forget. You've done that. Ah. That's okay. Right. And uh, <clears throat> well, I've asked her to stop, and she refuses. And I just want to know, I mean, do you think that she has is, an obligation to? Right, the psychiatrist is a woman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is your dad addicted or alcoholic in other ways? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. All right. Well, this, this is psychiatrist does not understand how to manage an alcoholic addict. Now, there may be other priorities in his psychiatric care that she's trying to attend to first. There are situations where it can be important, life-saving, stabilizing, to give people medications that might adversely impact their addictive disease if their psychiatric illness is such that they're in harm's way. Now, Ambien is not a medicine that typically sort of you would use for important reasons. And the well, fact that he's getting addicted to it, which is very common, yeah. uh, it's just more, it doesn't really matter. He's just addicted. You guys are probably going to have to do an intervention and get him into some sort of inpatient treatment where he can be detoxified. Because ambient withdrawal is rather awful. Oh, yeah? yeah it is. Not for me. Do it about every two weeks. Yeah, well. Well, let's, let's, but I don't understand something. She gives him enough of this stuff to give him three four or four day. pills a day. Doesn't and oh, she no. aware of that? She, does, she doesn't do that. He takes way too much of it. He yeah, but how does she? Why does she keep refilling it? Uh, at, I don't know. You'd have to. Ask. You know what you got to do, Jesse? Contact the pharmacy where he's getting these things. Yeah. yeah because they they tend to have a little more um, ability to track these things, and okay. let them. And then they if they know something like this is going on and they continue to fill it, they they have a problem. So that might help out a little bit. But really, get him into treatment. I mean, the bottom line, he needs to be in addiction treatment, and that's that. So. Hey, that, that Ambien is yummy. <laughs> I <laughs> really? love that stuff. That's, the, that's, where you, that's where you started <clears throat> talking about my scoring on your behalf, was in relation to that drug. Yeah, I missed yeah. that Ambien. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Gotta I had to score. cut you off. Got to score some more. Oh, don't worry. You found another source? I know source. Dr. Marcel. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's uh, like Elvis's doctor. Uh, Whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Just have to I'll curl. be there to... Colonel calls him up. I got a bed waiting for you. No, you know what? I love that Ambien, and if you give me that Ambien, I'll eat it. But here's the thing, and then I'm out of it, and then I'm out of it. And then for how long? A couple hours, thank you, the shakes. Oh. We'll get some more. No, I, uh, get out of it and don't think about it. Months. Oh, 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 I see you. But, I mean, do, months, does it knock you out for a day or two after? I mean, does it affect your memory or any word finding? Or? Uh... I'm not as sharp as I normally would be, right. but I'm so much sharper than everyone else all the time that it really no just notices. brings me down to normal yeah, level. That's good. We well, don't see what normal. I'm saying? And, and modest as well. Right, yeah. No, I'm just I'm just saying it makes you it, yeah it makes you a little goofy the next day. I'm still back with the uh, <laughs> raping crimes and other crimes, but, all, all being the same. You know, I got to tell you, Drew is is a, just to be honest is a is a guy who's never really felt like he's got a full night's sleep in his life. Yeah, and who uh, likes to have a couple of 
couple of pops before he goes to bed at night, yeah. maybe sleeping pill or something like that. Right. I walk around all day, every day, with a sort of a quasi um, soupy head. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just uh, I can feel my head. A little wear my forehead. That's the sleeping. Not not thinking not thinking too clearly. Not too sharp, but eh, still can still can rally. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, I'm Here like a like a, a good athlete who uh, doesn't doesn't train too hard and still and still can get by. Yeah, still get by. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just interested in getting by. I don't want to be that. Oh, good. I understand that. I've seen that. Thank you. All, All right. right, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. We need someone to do weather and sports and traffic on this show so we can just, uh, and then play a few songs. <laughs> I just like to be a traffic cop for a while. I'm tired of spinning plates. I just want to sit back. Is there somebody can come in? How about a movie review? How about you do a movie review? What day is it? Tuesday? Tuesday. Drew does a movie review. Huh? No. Okay. All right, where are we? What are we doing? We're going to take some calls? Sure. And then we're going to interview with our Fox Cleveland affiliate. Yeah. Now, why is our Fox Cleveland affiliate well, here? What's her answer? Come what on. do you mean, our Fox Cleveland well, affiliate? Well, we are a new station in Cleveland. And right. The, and the television station locally... Wanted to do some interviewing. I don't know if that was motivated because of our new affiliate, but they... Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No? <laughs> no offense. Nothing personal. And and this is uh, Suzanne? Stratford. Stratford. I'm going to write that down. Because you'll forget. Yeah. Suzanne Stratford. And now what is... what now? Wait, I'm supposed to interview you. Okay, but first... <laughs> You're asking me questions. What are you doing here? Did you come out here from Cleveland? We did. For what? <laughs> For this? For well, Drew? Well... November's approaching, and there are plenty of stories that I'm sure our viewers would be interested in and dealing with uh, important subjects such as sexual issues dealing that that everybody Addiction. in society faces but, but you, hooking you, up and you buddy came out and, you came out to do a story on drew, correct? No, we're doing different stories on different topics, but Drew's our expert since he's the... Oh, I see. So are you guys <laughs> traveling around then? No, no. I just did an interview with them today, and I said, hey, go ahead and come to the radio studio and talk to Adam. Oh, okay. Some pictures. All right, so you got your mm -hmm. cameraman here. Right. And, uh, he, well, here's what happened. And so Susan's been hanging out the whole show, just uh, quietly, probably enjoying herself. And uh, <laughs> and they've been filming me and Drew and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Susan said, uh, do, you, do you have time for an interview? And we decided maybe it'd be better to do it on the air. Cause no, no. You just you said you've got to do it between now and 12 o'clock. And... Right, because I, right. I had to leave the second that... I like to actually leave a little before twelve tonight, but uh, so and, we, and then we realized Drew brought up that we we don't have a guest tonight, obviously, or maybe we do. And Susan, and also Suzanne. Suzanne <laughs> Thank oh. you. You know, my wife's best friend is uh, Suzanne, and uh, your wife Drew is Susan. Susan <laughs> yeah. And if you screw up one of the uh, inflections on one of the syllables, everyone acts. Uh, You're talking about a different person. It like, starts in childhood. That's uh, that's a childhood it, parent it's thing. It's so and... painful. Yeah. All right, so no, wait a minute. We got the no, wait. We it's a we got the the Su, we got the Suzanne. Yeah, Suzanne. Okay, all right, all right. So anyway, the point is, is we've done interviews on the air where they interviewed us before. So why don't we just do that? We don't have boring a guess, what bit. the hell. Yeah, we never get interviewed. <laughs> We're just interviewing everyone else. What questions do you have for us, uh, Suzanne? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure my, my news director is probably sitting back at the station or sitting back in Cleveland listening to the radio up late at night going, hmm, I sent you to California for sweep stories. Now you're going to ask them on the air. That's yeah, go okay. ahead. What do you got? Do you have anything? Do I have anything for you? Well, yeah. Just do it! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, the, the reason we're here, though, the main reason is we're talking about a lot of the sex trends with uh, with teenagers, and you right. certainly you talk a lot about sex and stuff. With, sure. But I was see, I was I was guessing that when you talk about buddy sex and teenagers and how they have multiple partners, and you're talking about 15 year olds having 50 plus partners, that that to you probably would sound like a good thing, whereas to Dr. Drew, that was definitely not a good thing. No, I, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's good to have a 15 year old have uh, 50 plus partners. I mean, I. Uh, 
I, I do. I Well, no, actually, Drew is a man of supreme passion. I don't know if he's made that abundantly clear to you. Uh, so it would be better. I, I'd be more into that than you would right. be. Yeah, but no, uh, I, I make I make fun of everybody and have a good time, make, make uh, several thousand beat-off jokes uh, an hour, but... I still realize that, uh, you know, 15-year-olds having multiple partners, probably not a great idea and all that. Uh, orgies and everything that's going on in junior high is probably not the healthiest thing. Here's a question. How did you become a sex expert? Because I've seen your show. I've seen you guys on when you were on MTV, and I've heard you on the radio, but I didn't. I never really realized how you became the sex expert. Uh, I just uh, became one from doing this show, really. <laughs> That's How did it. you start the show? Uh, well, the show was the show was on the radio in Los Forever. Angeles for a good ten years before, uh, maybe twelve years before. What Drew? What year are you on in, in this show? Year twenty. Oh, this this may be starting. Yes, starting twenty one, like December. Okay, so the show yeah. the show was Ooh. on twelve years before I got here, and I used to listen to this show. Uh, because I grew up in the uh, Los Angeles area and was a K Rock fan, and that, which is the mother station where the show all began. I used to listen to this show as a kid. Well, shouldn't say as a kid, but uh, senior year of high school probably. And then later on in life, as I worked and worked at night and drove around, I would always mm -hmm. listen to this show. So and call in with questions, I'm sure. Now, uh, <laughs> we did call in with a bogus question uh, one time. I put some friends uh, up to it and actually videotaped it uh, in my kitchen of my apartment when I was like 19. But uh, no, I never, I never called in. But I did, I did enjoy Drew and uh, the poor man who was on at the time, and then uh, Ricky Rackman mm -hmm. uh, later on. So I always enjoyed the show, and it's uh, almost uh, surreal to be sitting here. And then, but I am over it. Yeah, for quite some time. Said, yeah. But then the the boxing thing. What's the boxing thing? Well, oh, that oh, how how did I yeah, get yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I used to be a boxing instructor, and I uh, I trained Jimmy Kimmel to uh, do some mm -hmm. boxing a long, long time ago. Before I knew him, for some radio stunt, we made friends, and he got me in on the radio. Well, you did, you did. well, then what was the, the character you did that I heard? Uh, I don't want to bore every, everybody a, around. A, 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 a perverted woodshop instructor. Yeah, <laughs> who would Mr. Bertram, who you can hear. Uh, on Crank Yankers. On Crank Yankers, mm -hmm. Tuesday nights, by the way, 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. Comedy Central. So anyway, that's right. And I heard him, okay. and we had, the TV show came along. And, right. So. Now, you were recently married. Yes. Okay, so how does your wife handle some of your... Responses? Does she listen anymore? You heard Did about, she listen you, previously? First of all, you heard how she found his soiled pants in right, the living that's, room. Okay, that's, exactly that's what she lived with. <laughs> I didn't say soiled, discarded. Okay, I beg your pardon. It's, it's a big difference. Okay. Um, and there's, there's, by the way, is a difference between the the uh, position, the lay of your pants when you're taking them off to beat off, and then taking them off to take them off to right, like take right. a shower. The beat off is they're smashed down. They're still standing up. It's just the legs are collapsed. It, it, yeah. it's, uh, remember how the Wicked Witch, when she got the yes. water thrown on her, you just go straight yes. down yes. Right. that way. Yeah. As, if, <laughs> as if someone just pulled you out of them and they just fell straight down. When you're getting in a shower, you take them off, you lay them across right. something, you lay them on a <laughs> chair. Right. There's something point. deliberate. You take them up, you reach down and pull from the heel. Right. That's right. When you're beating off, you throw them down, right. you shove them down, There's and an you, you jump out of them. <laughs> so when they just look like a bucket sitting there, that's a, like a spittoon with a crotch in it. In fact, Suzanne cracked me up totally. Today. She goes, uh, she goes, See, I hear some of some married couple they only have sex five times a year. She goes, "How is that possible?" I go, uh, "Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah." Now I'm gonna have to look for the pants. I've only been uh, married a year. We yeah, just had our first anniversary, so my uh, uh, my my wife doesn't listen to the show. Okay, I mean, she's quite honestly, did she look, watch the man show? I saw. Was she on the man show she, one time? Yeah. She was on one okay. time. Uh, she's got TiVo. She goes to bed early. She's not interested in what I have to say. She gets an ass full. Of my uh, yapping during the week, and she's not that interested. And I really count on doing this show with no one I know listening, I, and that's why I can. Trash, like, trash how many times I call my dad a pussy on this show? <laughs> every night. Every night. <laughs> I'll call my dad the biggest pussy in the world, and then go out to lunch with him tomorrow. <laughs> he doesn't listen. Is it one of those Howard Stern things, though, where you worry that she's going to be buying a home or grocery shopping, and everybody's going to surround her and say, "Did you hear what your husband said on oh, that, radio ooh, last that, night? That, Does that, that happen? Did we have something like that happen? Uh, once. Oh, well, that that woman at work. 
Uh, your husband was flirting, remember that? Yeah, once in a while, oh. one of the uh, C's she works with uh, <laughs> decides to fill her ear with some piece of erroneous something. Yeah. And uh, I'm really uh, hoping that something uh, heavy lands on them and just kills them. But uh, <laughs> other other than uh, the coozes at uh, work who uh, once in a while uh, nibble on her ear and tell her something out of context that I may have said on this radio, like I was hitting on some guest or something, which uh, does happen. But... Uh, uh, other than that, she's fine. Listen, here, here's the thing, too. Uh, reality, seriously. I make all the money. I do everything. I don't right. give a rat's ass. That, that's it. If you she, bring home the bacon and she... Brings home the bacos. Uh, <laughs> explain her. No, she listen. It. It's, it's, it's not a disrespect thing, but I, I make a ton of money compared right. to her not making all that much money. And I don't give a rat's ass what she said. And as my, as my mom uh, said to me uh, two days ago when I was on... Kimmel, she said, I, I watched you, but I, I, I didn't appreciate one of the things you said, which is uh, you said uh, we were talking about rats. You said uh, they were like old Jews. They would eat anything. And I thought that was, you know, herring, liver, gefilte yeah. fish, yeah. you know, uh, electrical wiring, drywall. <laughs> I, she said, I think that was insensitive. I didn't appreciate it. She's oh, not, I'm she's, surprised you didn't bring that up on the radio. She's, she's not. My mom's not Jewish, mm -hmm. but she looks out for all kinds other what than her own say? goddamn family. Oh. So I just said, uh, yeah, well, so what? Who cares? You know, she said, well, I just don't think it's a nice. Yeah. No. Who cares? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> then whatever you want. You didn't lay into her. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any reason to lay into her. But if my wife says, like, hey, I don't, I just go, like. Uh, Tough ass. That's, it's the same thing I would say to anybody who says anything about what I say. Drew, have I ever had a, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to fix that? No, no, no. No, I just say, all right, so what? Who cares? So, look, fire me, divorce me, or just shut up. No four carat diamond rings yet? <laughs> no. I, listen, I'm not into all that. I'm, I'm not into this thing. In in a relationship where we where where the guy like Drew does, where you have to spend your whole life on the ropes, apologizing, sending flowers. Listen, I build the houses, I spend the money, I make a thousand times more than she does, and I give her a good life. Good. Now quiet down. And she gets to spend the money. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no All right. well, there, yeah I'm just not going to get on the ropes. Drew over here is apologizing and backpedaling and uh, kissing his ass and her ass and everyone else's ass. It, Drew goes to the Playboy Mansion to do a politically incorrect a few years ago. His wife starts screaming at him. You went to the Playboy Mansion with that man. You never told me you lied. Drew's like, I'm sorry. That was dishonest. Yeah, look, and here's the other thing, too, with women. They, uh, they're like kids. When they'll start spinning no. out. They'll get out of control. That's not true. Yes. You can't say that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely not. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's not true. Listen, here's the deal with women. God God bless it's them. It's not true. I swear it's not true. <laughs> they're good at they're good at they're good at certain things, but their minds are slightly more feeble than guys and they will get they will spin out. They will. Drew's wife is already out of control. It's it. That horse has uh, got out in the barn. There's nothing you can do about it. And Drew should keep her in check, but he doesn't. Drew, why don't you? She's great. What are you talking about? She, okay, she's a dynamite lady. He's scared to talk now. I, all I'm saying is is uh, I don't do anything wrong. I'm not cheating. I'm not screwing around. I'm not doing anything like that. So I got nothing to apologize for. And that's all that matters Thank to you. every woman. That's, that's all that matters. Right. Well, no, I, right. I apologize if I don't pay attention. I do something that inadvertently yeah, You're hurts apologizing somebody. for going to the Playboy Mansion to do politically incorrect the week Bill Maher does politically incorrect from the Playboy Mansion, and you rush out of there at 8.30 so you can get to this gig. That's a pol you have to apologize to your wife is if you went to a pajama party at the Playboy Mansion. No, right. Yeah, it, you, it, need it, to, you need to you need to tug her chain a, a little. Tell her, look and relax. That's not apologizing. Apologizing is when you're dating somebody and you stumble upon the porn collection. That's like you're talking about weird porn. That's yeah. when you start apologizing. I know. <laughs> go go party doing Adam your job. You don't Adam apologize. Adam does not apologize for that. for that either, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. you would if you. This was your collection. <laughs> You'd be apologizing. It was your collection? No, 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 no. no. Somebody I dated. Mm. Yeah. What was in it? Uh, was, uh, weird. Was it yeah, weird? Yeah, it was weird. Like it what? Weird. Stump. Stump. And there was stump? a lot of it, and it was really creepy, and it was hidden under T-shirts. Like was it what? From Germany. <laughs> no Scheiser films. No. Germany. Not that just I. The no. weirdest everything. No, it was weird though. But like. What I, was it? I probably Animals? No, 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 nothing like that. Well, you've made, you're one of these people that just thinks all porn is weird. No, that's not true. I mean, it's not my thing, but it's obviously not my thing. But Well, what, I look, mean, if it wasn't animal porn. You were in the military. That must have been. Was it, was it, it wasn't <laughs> it was animal? Weird. What kind of porn was it? I don't want to say. All right, well, that's enough. I, we're done then. You, you got to answer his question. I said what kind yeah. of porn it is, offended. or we're done.
And okay, <laughs> we're, we're done. done. I can't we're say. Done. I can't All say. Right, that's fine. I have a morality clause. I can't say. That's fine. Yeah. But shut her mic. That. Chris, you gotta shut the mic. All right, what done. does that have to do with? No, nah, it doesn't matter. No, nah, 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 it's off. Brian? Oh. Hello. Well, look, I don't know. So she's writing it down. She's writing it down for you. No. Yeah. Still, Mike's still off. Brian? Hello? You're 23. Yes. What's that? Female? Females or males? Male. Oh, mm. true. Please. Mm. Hello? It's what you were talking about, Adam. Brian? This guy's into yes, the stuff hello? that you were talking about. All right. Well, we're moving He's, ahead the, the with the show. The world is his oyster. We're moving forward with the show. All right. Thank you. Brian? Hello? Yes? You're 23? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I moved out of my house about four years ago, and I started living um, a homosexual lifestyle. Um, I'd always had these feelings and things, and I started acting out them, but it just, I never felt any sort of fulfillment through the relationships I was going through. Yeah, it sounds I like mean, you're talking about somebody else. Like he he moved out. He lived a homosexual lifestyle. I it's mean, a, well... You like you like men. That's your thing. Yeah. Were you, were you sexually abused growing up? I was, actually. By a male? Yes, by an have older you, boy about uh, down the street. Have you resolved that stuff? I mean, have you... I mean, again, we, we, we generally say that that, you know, some can set up the orientation, but once it's there, it's yeah, there. it's there. What are you going to do? Well, what I'm saying is, now that I've done this and everything, uh, people that I'm with are saying, well, I'm sorry, you know, you are how you are. And my whole thing is, I don't want to. You know, I'm not feeling any sort of, you know, acceptance or fulfillment in my life at all to this point. I mean, yeah, honestly, it's like I've gone to college. I've lived a life that I thought I wanted. Um, I thought that it would make me feel better because I was always like, I always felt like I was hiding. Um, hiding from what I really wanted, what I really felt like who I was. And then I went out and lived it, and it was like... Can you, can you put him on hold for a second? Yeah. You, I'm not he's, feeling it. No. Nah, What's well, the deal here? He's changed gears a little bit. A couple times. I, I kept expecting a punchline almost because it was like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't feel it. I mean, it might be real. It might be part of the way he sort of... Well, he he's he's f having a. I mean, he's he's trying to get us to feel it. I'm just not sure if he feels it. And that it's maybe that dissociation that we're picking up on. But boy, it's like mm, it makes yeah. But it, it's it's not the flat aspect. No. We don't feel it. It's the it almost feels like bad acting. Right. Exactly. But exactly. as we've talked about. In the past, a certain percentage of society doesn't sound believable. Right. That's right. No, that's no right. No matter uh, what they do. But I, I, I'm not getting a question. Keanu Reeves is one of those. Oh, man. One of that segment of society. <laughs> that's just, no matter what comes out of his mouth, it's not believable. I, I, ironically, he's an actor. But, uh, all, right. all right. So what's the question? Brian? Yes, hello? Uh-huh. What college did you go to? I went to uh, BYU-Idaho. Brigham Young University of Idaho. Really? They got one of those? Yeah. I'm, uh, I am LDS, uh, Mormon. Wow. All right. And so meant, you, you, uh, yeah. you, are you not able to tell anybody about this because of that? Uh, I, I hide in what, what I'm trying to ask here, what I'm trying to get across is, as I'm struggling through this with your, you know, your sex therapist, whatever, is it possible for me to switch this orientation, these desires that I have? I mean, everyone I go to says, you're hiding who you are. You need to be who you are. Well, to change. the current evidence suggests that once this, whatever the wiring is that sets up sexual orientation is set, it's pretty much set. Now, there are people out there who claim they can change people's orientation. That is certainly not mainstream thought. Yeah, uh, and people actually believe that you might be screwing people up a little bit by trying to do that. Well, you do it, that move where you take the penis and you put it in the Bible and you just yeah. slap it like the clapper when you're making a movie. Teaching you know, a lesson when you slate. Yeah, you know you're making a movie. Slap. Right. It, uh, that's the only effective way I can think of. Hey Brian. Yeah. Okay. Here's the, here's the problem. Um, all right. Now I'm gonna talk to Drew about this. Yeah. Um, so you start off, you're not gonna be gay. Right. That's the way you go. Your family's Mormon, and uh, did he say it was Mormon family? Yep. Okay. What's the LDS? Is Latter Day Saints? Yeah. Does everyone need five names? Or can we just stick with Mormons? It's more confusing. And I thought LDS was like a Luke Garrick's disease or something. That's uh, ALS. Okay. Yeah. Let's see how confusing this Alphabet is. Alphabet soup. Yes. Here's the point. You start off straight as an arrow. 
you got the uh, Mormon family. Then all of a sudden, some guy gets hold of you down the street, and he uh, gets in during during the formative years. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're uh, you're like you're like a young sprout. Ah, here's what I want to say: if, if a full a full grown tree, full full grown oak tree, you could hang a tire swing on it. The whole tree's not going to lurch to that side. The right. roots are in the ground; yeah. it ain't going anywhere. Right. But when it's a young sapling and you start pulling it to one side, it's going to end up growing that way. And then trying to pull it back? wasn't meant to grow that way, right. but you put weight on it, and that weight yeah. was uh, the guy down the street who was molesting this kid. Mm-hmm. Now it's growing that way. Once it starts growing that way, what do you think you're going to do, bend it back? No. Now it breaks if you try to bend it back. There's nothing, nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But now he's feeling sort of trapped because he's feeling like the guy wasn't supposed to be gay, but he is gay. Well, he doesn't want to be gay, which a lot of young males who are gay feel. They they want to they want to deny it. They want to change it. They want. I also they, feel like he feels like this wasn't his destiny, but that this guy yeah. caused him to go that direction. Yeah. So now, what do you do? Because you know, as a part, of, ah, just start. You know, just uh, hunker down with guys. But I mean, it's like r- well, really. That, yeah, that's one way to do it. I mean, that's the, that'd be the mainstream way of doing it, really. I know, but really because uh, listen, uh, right, here's some, the deal. Some, right, buddy, some guy down take, the street put his hand down your your under ruse. You'll you'll always appreciate. It. We'll take it back to you. Uh, we have got to undo your preoccupation with the big breasts. How dare you? Okay, that's it. End of discussion. Yes. You take th- that back. <laughs> take it back. I take it back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you just tell me not to apologize? Um, okay. Look, look, right? Yeah, how are we gonna how are we gonna do that? And take that out of you. Even if we took it out of you, you know, and let you live within a small-breasted world, yeah. what, what, no, no. <laughs> what would happen? Shh. Quiet. You understand? Yes. And I don't know, I, you know, again, it was your mom's neglect and the abuse and all that stuff. You, you suffered and you created sh- the preoccupation with parts of women's bodies. How dare you speak of my mother. I beg your pardon. That woman is a saint. Or just in the abstract, if your mother had behaved like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, but the point is, is we don't live in a society that uh, comes down on guys who like a big set of cans. Right. We we I was able to do a TV show about that. Make some money. <laughs> we we do well. They're just queer eye for the straight guy. There you go. Okay, so it is it is it's more com- complicated than just saying listen, go for what you know or be right. who you are. No, or whatever. that's right. It's very. Uh, painful. Here's what I would say. I would say if you got molested by the guy down the street for a long period of time, you need therapy. You need to just, look into just that. from that. All just right. that, regardless. So, of your so that's it. Yeah. Don't don't be tortured. Right. I know it's it's hard to tell someone not to be tortured, but don't make a move, hey, I'm gay, hey, I'm straight, hey, I'm bi. Say, uh, hey, I'm a guy who needs to be in some therapy. Right. I'm going to sort some things out. That's get right. my head together. Take a little time off. And then I'm going to come back into the game with a clear head. And whatever direction I go, I'll that'll better. be the one I yeah, choose. Yep. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number, 1-800-LVE-191. We were just uh, talking to uh, Suzanne. That's our uh, uh, ABC affiliate in Fox. Cleveland. Fox. All right, Fox. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the affiliate is in Cleveland. Out here doing a story. Talking to Dr. Drew. Whatever. Whatever. All right. Drew, did you use this pen I, I have? I just. Is it horribly unsatisfying to write with this pen? It's too thin. Yeah, it's yeah. too thin. Yeah, we're used to the big fat pens now. Yeah, yeah. No, not big fat. I, I, I've said it once. I'll, I'll say it a thousand times. Like you go to you go to the goddamn store to buy pens. It's like uh, it comes in fine, extra fine, and dental instrument. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone you know that like you know that thing when you're writing with the pen and it feels like you're scratching, like yes. you're embossing it right. into the paper yes. more than you're actually drawing? Like, hey, you want to find out what I just wrote? Take a piece of charcoal and rub it over the top. It's negative will appear. Does yeah, anyone just make that. regular pens? Yeah. Everyone likes a medium pen. No one likes the super ultra fine writing instrument. And what are we doing? The kids like that. No, they Little don't. Kids. No, but it feels like you're scratching and everything looks ugly. You get a nice little thick, nice medium stream there. It looks nice. I can't stand this. What is this? How come everything's ultra super fine? And that probably isn't even ultra fine. That's just regular. It's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. It sucks. Fine sucks. Start making medium, and everyone start buying medium. And what's going on, Drew? You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. All right. Does is, is this feel? This is, I also can't use these little pens anymore. they got to be fast. And what's this feel like when you're drawing? Like, like you're using a toothpick. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. And this is fine. 
Oh, but I like the ultra super fine. Super old. It's so fine, you can't read it. <laughs> what the hell's going on with this society, Drew? They're, they're Who the... took a vote and said we only like super ultra fine pens? Somebody must buy them and they would not manufacture them. I mean, people are stupid. That's why. Christina? Yeah. What's I have a up, question. baby doll? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm in a relationship, and I don't know... Hold on a second. Oh. Let me say this, too, along with all that kind of stuff. I don't know why it just popped in my head, but uh, I've been <laughs> yelling about this in the past, too. Why does every goddamn pair of shoes I have have uh, tennis shoes? The shoelaces are 27 inches long on both sides, yeah, so i got to try triple knot yeah. and then trip over it. Yeah. Uh, who, who does this? Who manufactures these things? Yeah. Really? Right. You don't put a foot in your goddamn shoe and tie a bow? You need an extra 17 inches hanging off the goddamn thing? What is that? Are we just being effed with? What is that? Does this corporate America get together and go, yeah, let's give them a choice between super ultra fine and ultra super fine and drive them nuts. And then you know what we'll do? Hey, Bob, I got a great idea. Every pair of tennis shoes we sell, 28-inch laces <laughs> hanging off each side. So they got to double knot everything and then tuck the extra 14 inches into the shoes they don't step on. Hey, uh, Bert, hold on. I don't want to be a naysayer, but what if they just clip them and cut them short? No, they can't. They can't because they'll fray. They don't have the little stays at the end. It'll yeah. unravel that way. Yeah. Good. Good job. And what about dress shoes? Should we make those long? <laughs> no. No, too we'll short. Make them too short. Too short. <laughs> we'll make them too short. That'll really get them. And make them out of, of, of we'll, rock. Yeah, we'll, we'll make them out of cat gut <laughs> with no flexibility to them. And have to tie them with their using tweezers. That's great. Okay. Tennis shoes, way too long. Dress shoes, way too short. Pens, extra super ultra fine. All right. Wait, are they just, are they just trying to get everyone to kill themselves? Because that's what I would do if I was trying to get people to kill themselves. Yeah. I would subtly F with them that way. I have 30 pair of tennis shoes. I just sit there and think, what am I going to do with all the... I, I could, if, if you took the extra lace I have on every pair of tennis shoes I've owned over my life, you could turn the world into a yo-yo. <laughs> you could wrap it around the world 15 times and, and walk the dog. <laughs> I could do cats in the cradle with the world. Do you understand? I understand. Are, 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 did they save money by handing out extra laces? Is that cheaper? It's hard to understand. Is, is, is a 46-inch lace cheaper than a 22-inch lace? W what is it? Yeah, it's weird. Whose foot is that goddamn wide that it would use up that kind of lace on that tennis it's shoe? Nobody. There would have to be 13 inches of just open span of your, of your foot. Yes. Like Shaq would have to squeeze into my shoe in order to use the lace up that it's there to for. Make it even closer. And then it would be the wrong shoe for the size foot. <laughs> right. Completely. Is, does anyone ever talk about this? Is, 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 can we get to the bottom of this? W why? I don't understand. You walk on it, they get all filthy. You go into the men's room, yeah. they sit in a puddle of urine. Got the double bow. Oh, no. And then everyone's got a tip. I wrap mine around my ankle three or four times. Cut the circulation off. Then I do a double bow, and I tuck the extra up my ass. What? What is that? I can't imagine. Look! Figure out how much you need for a normal bow, and that's the goddamn shoe length. That's the length of the lace. I'd say I'm just eyeballing it here, Drew, but I'll tell you what I need on the side of my shoe. I need about nine inches. At most. That's At top. Tops. Here's my range. Seven and a half to nine. Yeah. Nine and a quarter. Seven and a half to nine. Nine and five sixteenths. Seven and a half to nine and five sixteenths. That's the range I need. Yeah. I got 26 inches that hanging should, off That should, by the way, satisfy everybody. You know what they're Not hoping? You. They're hoping we'll hang ourselves with that extra lace. Yeah. That's what that's their plan. That's all right. Sorry. Where tennis shoes, thousand feet. And here's the thing too. All right, maybe, maybe okay. it's one lace. No, no, no. Fluid, and that no, to no. cover the high tops. No, and no, no, no. Because the high tops you got to wrap twice around here. Whenever I play hoop, it's like, oh, what do I do with all this extra lace? Wow. The high tops got to be double. Uh, they just they they just do the percentage. It's the same thing. It's, I, just, it's just longer. It's like we need to have. 70% more lace than is actually usable, and uh, I don't care if it's a wrestling boot that goes up to your kneecap, it's going to have, that'll be 40 feet of extra lace we'll have to put on that. <laughs> or if you're just wearing just a little deck shoe that has three little crossovers there, that's going to that's gonna be just 14 inches. inches. Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. Let's all kill ourselves. Let's all hang ourselves by these laces, or let's stab ourselves through the jugular with the extra fine pants. You don't even feel them going in, like syringes. Christina? Yeah. Now you can go. Um, 
I was wondering, um, is there something wrong with me? I'm in a relationship, and I don't know whether or not I should go forward with having sex with him because I'm not usually sexually active, and I'm, I'm not a virgin. But the thing is with me is I don't find pleasure in sex, period. Hmm. Meaning you don't want it and it isn't pleasant when you do it? No, I want it. I want pleasure. I just don't feel it. There's nothing there. It. Well, now, whoop. When you say nothing there, you mean you mean you're, you're not feeling pleasure or you're feeling like numb. I'm I'm feeling like um what am I doing numb? What am I like, doing numb but not no. physically numb like you're dissociated from parts of your body. Of callers to I give, I give A or B and they they go B and a, they go A and a half. <laughs> um, no, it's just numb like I just don't I don't have that feeling like Are you on a medication? No, I'm not Look, on medication. Here's what I'm saying. It, uh, this is quite true. Uh, you can eat food that you don't like and you just don't seem to enjoy it. Then you can go to the dentist, get your gums numbed up, get a bunch of fillings and eat something. And even if it's something you like, you can't taste it. It doesn't feel right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is this a, is a prom where you physically can't feel yourself down there? It just uh, feels like someone iced you down or it's numb? Or it's just you're just not interested? No, it's like... For no. instance, I'll have sex. No, listen, yeah, it yeah. ain't no. It's it's it's, it's it's A or B. It's it's I'm just physically like it's not physically numb. It's I'm just I don't feel it. Like there's no you know satisfaction out of it. Like it's numb. Yeah, like, just say not just say it's not physically numb. But I just don't enjoy it. Don't say it's, I don't enjoy I, it. I don't it, feel yeah. it because because yeah. right. feeling suggests numb, right? Not feeling nah, numb. So, uh, listen, I'm gonna start talking about love for a second. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the tassels? <laughs> All right. Is there something wrong with me? Well, uh, you ever get abused or raped or anything? When I was younger, I was sexually assaulted, but that mm -hmm. has How never been. Um, I was, I believe, 12. And what happened? Um, he basically, I was dragged into a room and I was assaulted. Who did this? What What does assaulted mean? What happened? I, I was in a group home and... Oh, uh, okay, okay. Oh, all right, okay. All right, well... <laughs> Group uh, home. It, it wasn't a staff. It was a co-ed group home. And one why of were you in a group home? Um, both my parents passed away. Both? both. What did they die from? Um, car accidents. Oh my God. Accidents, died. though. Yeah, they were. They were both not the same related. one. They what? Yeah. <laughs> they're both what? They were both drug related. Okay. Right. They, they both were like high and got into an accident. Yeah, well, what it is is both my parents were drug addicts. My dad died when I was three, and my mom died when I was nine. Wow. Right, but both in a car. Both in car accidents, yeah. All right. Boy, Christina's mm. had a tough life. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah our, our life is miserable now, too, just trying to get <laughs> stuff out of her. Yeah, but, I mean, right. the only thing is, is I was living in the group home. It, he, I went upstairs to go get something out of my room, and he grabbed me and dragged me in his room and just... Yeah. How old was he? He was 16. And you were 12. Yeah. All right, so that that's pretty heavy. And then your parents being drug addicts is pretty heavy, and then your parents dying is pretty heavy. So you're, uh, it, I, it's really amazing that uh, you're even where you are now. Yeah. Thank All you. Right, so, I appreciate it. Yeah. Are you, are you in any therapy? Um, I was in therapy for a while, and actually I just got my own apartment and I'm living on my own, and it's really good for me because I think I need to be by myself. Mm. Mm. Do you work? Yeah, I work. Were you sexually compulsive at one time? No, actually I wasn't. Um, You've always been kind really, of shut down. I didn't really think about it. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's, that's right. the best alternative <laughs> outcome to these kinds of situations. All right, so here's here's the thing. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be a, a while before your vagina points to true north. Yeah. It's 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 a compass that's been uh, with a bunch of magnets around it. Yeah. Hey, just be really careful. Go very slow. Don't have relationships for a while. Maybe go back into therapy. Uh, it's going to be tough for you to be intimate. It's going to be tough for you to really be physically close to someone and get to a point where you like sex. Hopefully you'll find somebody that, with whom you feel safe enough and attracted enough to that you can start to do this. But you're 18. Uh, take your time. Maybe a long time before you start to feel uh, yeah. something more satisfying. And, and by the way, doesn't uh, those group homes, I mean, what do they think uh, goes on in those places? Co-ed group home. I mean, just a bunch of screwed up kids abuse, who are neglected. victims of abuse mm -hmm. show me some 16 year old kid whose uh, pops was beating on him and physically and sexually abusing him his whole life and then dump him off with some 11 and 12 year old chicks and no 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 tommy that's your side of the hall 
He said, and we're, we're going on the honor system. No rape. By the way, act of violence. <laughs> the sexual crime. So, so in other words, if that same child had gone in and ripped off some uh, celery from the refrigerator. And, then, and, then and ejac- came. Ejac- and <laughs> came. Same, same. Same, same, as, same, rape. As, same as rape. Same as rape. Right, so we were talking about earlier in the show that uh, rape is uh, not a, not an act of sex. I'm, I'm not sure. Another example. But, but it's of an act home. of violence where you come. So what else could he have done would have been the same crime at that group home as raping? Sometimes they keep uh, a change bucket, the uh, like in the ashtray. Let's say the parents will come home. Yeah, they'll yeah. empty. You'll yes, oftentimes yes. do this. You'll yes. take your extra change. Throw maybe it just the, yes. meter money. You'll throw it in right. an ashtray. You'll throw it in a tray by the front door, oftentimes by the entryway. Oftentimes, yes. S- stealing that handful of nickels, quarters, and dimes is the same as rape. It's it's a crime. If you but you gotta come. In the jar? In the in the actual <laughs> tray. That's right. That's right. And you you stick them all together and you make a paperweight out of the change. That's a crime. All right. True's laughing crime. based on something that was funny uh an hour and a half ago. It, this seems never never evergreen. Well it's just it's just the fact that everyone is always very I, and yeah. I, I, everyone, ever, all the women's groups are always very clear to do that. Rape, rape, rape. It's not, it's not a sex, it's not a sexual crime. It's a crime. It's a crime of violence. It's a crime of violence, which is uh, some, some, somehow makes it okay. And and it's, it's, again, yeah, it's a la- crime. It's a crime of violence where you come, <laughs> which is I try to explain to everyone the the sexual. To me, by the way. It can be a sexual crime. That still means it's bad. That's right. Like, like they always, they always, and it can be both violent and sexual. Right, which is really the point. They, they can, and they always do that thing though. I don't know why all the uh, women's groups are always into this though. Like where you go, like, uh, well, anyway, she's a rape victim, uh, rape survivor, rape survivor. <laughs> really, not a victim? No, no, survivor. Uh, when when you get you know carjacked, your your victim. Right? I mean, if you get hit by a drunk driver, you're a victim. When someone breaks in your house and assaults you, you're a victim. This is, I thought this was a violent, it's a violent, it's a crime of violence, isn't it? Only one where you're not a victim, though. But how do you be a victim and it's a crime? Ah, survivor. Like, here's what it is. It, it's, it's, it's angry chicks saying, you're not going to tell me what this is. I'll just correct well, you. Well, also, the lack of understanding the motivational systems of males. How they can't imagine how violence and sex could go together. And how, you know, how sex could be so aggressively, you know, uh, biologically. I, I just say I have the ultimate trump card here and that the guy busts a nut <laughs> during the act of the crime, which to me, call me crazy, turns it into something sexual. I'm, 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 I'm loony uh, that right, way. What are you talking about? You've just went through a it's, list of crimes it's no, where it's the same. It, it's no different than, than safe cracking if you come. <laughs> you got to come while you're cracking the safe. All right. All right. I found Drew's uh, comic Achilles heel. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Let's see. Next week, uh, Sarah Rue is going to be in here from uh, Less Than Perfect. Bob Guinea is going to be in here. He's The Bachelor. He's the guy who was in The Bachelor. He's a little bit uh, husky, but everyone loved him a couple of years ago, or maybe last season even, and now they brought him back as The Bachelor. Hmm. He was uh, he was vying for the love of The Bachelorette. He got down to about about the end, but he got cut right at the end. And he's back. And then uh, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is, uh, oh, man, let's see, sort of a, a cult star, Evil Dead and... Uh, also did I did all the Sam Raimi films that uh, are really cool if you guys uh, huh. haven't checked them out. I was all uh, all uh, he was uh, the Adventures of uh, Briscoe Nevada. Remember remember that show? No, no. Uh, the TV show. Yeah, vaguely. He's a good looking, funny uh, guy. He's, he's a big uh, cult guy. I don't know. Uh, I can tell you that. What's yeah. stealing time? What's I've got to tell you what the rest of that is. Anyway, uh, what is stealing time? What are you talking about? The there? last one. Uh, did you notice I didn't mention them? It's a film. Oh, it's a, a film. film. Okay. All right. True. Yeah, it's always a danger. Oh, Cheap Trick is coming in here, too, next week. Yeah. That's a good band. I'm glad uh, Glad they're back. All right. Where are we, Drew? Let's go to And Drew, listen. I, it's always a little danger in reading those things, because I don't, I don't mention everybody, but you always figure out the person who no one's heard of and you've never heard of, and then wander out loud on air who this person could be. Fair enough. Okay. Don't do that. All right. All right. 
I got to figure out this other Bruce Campbell. Hey, Anderson. Yeah, Can you hear me, Anderson? Yeah. What do you do beside the Evil Dead? What was the uh, big one? Evil oh, Dead Army of two, Darkness. Army of Darkness. Army Evil of Dead Darkness. Two. He's in all three of them. They're like, it's a trilogy. Yeah. Did you see those movies? Yes, I did. Did you enjoy them? Loved Evil Dead 2. Yeah. You didn't like Army of Darkness? Is that Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness? No. Evil Dead 2 is Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness is the third and final of the trilogy. Uh, I, I don't know. It was a little too over the top for me. Yeah. But I I've, I uh, found Bruce Campbell was pretty good in all uh, he's that. He's great. He's a great comedic actor. Yeah, real likable, real slapstick. nice looking, uh, just a uh, slapstick, funny guy, good yeah. guy. So uh, looking forward to meeting him uh, next week. All right, where is we, Drew? Um, AC. Yeah? AC has been on hold for 120 minutes. <laughs> oh, baby, what's up? Well, I have an ex-boyfriend problem. Three years ago, we had a kid together, and the minute I told him he was preg- I was pregnant, He said he wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. And about a month ago, our son passed away from a sickness. He had terminal cancer, and he Mm. died. And, well, now... He died at what age? um, A month before his third birthday. Oh, my God. What kind of cancer? Um, It was a cancer that affected his intestines and his stomach. You don't know what type, what the name was. And it's a really wrong, awkward name. <laughs> okay, okay. No, oh, that must have been devastating for you. Yeah, and it, it was really hard for me. And for some odd reason, my ex-boyfriend now wants to get back together. Mm-hmm. So he was afraid of the child. He split when this guy, when your son was born. Mm-hmm. And he's been out of out of the way for almost three years? He's been, you know, in our son's life for the most part, but he really didn't want anything to do with me. Mm. Mm. So he was in your son's life, taking care of your son, visitation? Yeah, he he visited. But wouldn't <sighs> relate to you. Yeah. And, and what, it sounds to me to more like more like he broke up with his girlfriend or something. Yeah. He's you think he got around, dumped yeah. on or someone dumped him or what? You know what? Here's our advice. You think he's done? You think he had a relationship that ended? Could be. Yeah. But our advice don't... is a bad guy. Yeah, bad guy. He, he, he close this door. Get on with life. Yeah. Leave this guy Sorry. behind. Sorry. Th- thankfully, there's nothing attached to him anymore. Yeah. Be, be done with it. That's and, it. And, and listen, here's here's the thing. This is it's as if it, it's as if you were uh, walking with your uh, it's like it's like you're walking with your wife you're walking with your girlfriend some guy jumps out of the bushes holding a knife you take your wife put her in front of you use her as a shield push her at the guy and say uh, hey, take her and run the other way and then the guys you find out that the guy was kidding that's just a buddy uh, uh, no. you, you showed your colors yes yes this guy showed. it doesn't doesn't matter now that oh it was just the guy was just kidding we yeah. we're just testing you yeah no you failed no yeah it's, this, this it, is who he is he showed himself yes Fine. It's bad. And I'm guessing he, he just got dumped on and he slid back over of there. Course. Just looking for Ron. Oh, just imagine a three year old mm-hmm. that way. It's awful. Well let me ask you this, Drew. You know, I really uh I know this sounds insensitive, but is there something that makes this easier having a kid when you're seventeen, eighteen and losing them at three than having I, a kid when you're thirty three and losing them at three? Probably. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a probably. there's a sense of geez, I'm a kid myself. B there's uh, gonna be a few more kids relief and, to yeah, more time. And, and uh not that this is ever a good thing, but I'm just yeah. and, and just in general you're just more pliable. it's like an injury. Yes, it's yeah. better to break your better to break your knee at eighteen than it is I, I at thirty eight. I don't know any literature to support this, but I suspect you're right. Well, just based on AC not sounding too bad. We yeah. call her devastated. Yeah. All right. Anyway, baby doll, don't worry about this guy. You find a good guy, and don't get pregnant for a while. Don't Please. try to make this up or oh, replace no, this no, no, or no, do no. any of that. It's bad for the kid that does the replacement. That's right, Danny. Danny. Yeah, Danny. Hello. Danny, you're 19. Danny, actually. Right. That's what we said twice. <laughs> oh, sorry. All right. Here we go. Okay. Um. So. Um, yeah, I'm in the adult entertainment, in, you know, industry, which means I do films, and, um... Can 19-year-olds do that? <laughs> broke, yeah. um... You gotta be over 18. do this. <laughs> all right, broke, all right. Um, you know, and I've, I've been finding so much judgment, you know, from sure. friends, Don't and, judge. you know, I mean, some family members, of course, you but... You stinking whore! 
No, that wasn't me judging. That was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, families judge. I remember my dad when my sister got into hardcore porn. He judged. That's probably my my dad would have been the best guy in the world to do that with because he wouldn't have gotten off the sofa. But uh, uh, yeah, so people judge, right? How much you get per movie? Actually, I get paid incredibly well. Um, it's an insane amount for. Um I my last shoot was thirteen hundred, um, and it was a boy girl scene. Usually, you make about six to seven hundred if you're really good, nine hundred. But this guy really takes care of us. So. You see, at, at, at nineteen, that seems like an insane amount of money. I know it, it, it's not. It and is. You, it, it is one of these funny <laughs> businesses yeah. in that. In that, when I was nineteen, I was making three seventy five an hour. And my pay scale went up as I got older. In the porn, as you get older, because, you know, when you get into your 40s, yeah. it's like, uh, listen, uh, we'll give you a Diet Coke, and uh, here's, here's $4. Here's bus money. Now blow that guy. And, but then she, you know, she's sacrificing so much for this just nominal amounts of money, right, well, in the big picture. Yeah, 1300 is 1300 I mean, well, yeah, but it, it, seems like, it seems like. Drew, you'll do 10 colleges for 1300 bucks <laughs> in Poughkeepsie. Are you kidding me? All right, so listen, Danny, what's your question? So it's okay. I mean, right now I'm finding out a lot more about myself. And, you know, I mean, sure. for the first time in like, I mean, I've been sexually active since I was 13. Uh -oh. All right. And uh -oh. Okay, listen, Danny, <laughs> we're out of time. Here's the problem. Okay. Uh, people judging is probably right, and it's probably not a great road for you to go down the uh, porn road. You stinking whore. Thank you. Uh, we're just, we're we, out we of time. We can talk to her tomorrow night. We'll talk, let's let's try to talk yeah, to Danny tomorrow night. If the screeners night. get their phone number, we'll pick up tomorrow. All right. We'll take quick break we'll be right back well any lucky guy you're late for your departure you're just late you make it out of here and we just uh, i just asked junior 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 uh producer lauren <laughs> what she's learned from uh doing this uh, radio show. Watching us work. She said, uh, well, you don't have to prepare. <laughs> you don't have to be educated. You get to leave early. <laughs> you don't have to be that educated. No, not educated. You'll be uneducated. Be good. Uh, it's, it's, it's luck, and it's who you know. And uh, what else? I think there's another one or two on there, too. <laughs> well, whatever it is. Uh, but she's speaking right. for herself? No, <laughs> no, she's talking about what, what she's, she's learned from watching Adam and me work. Yes. But she could be That's, speaking for herself as well. Oh, well, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, All right. For her job. All right, Anderson. Quiet down, or I'm going to ask her what it takes to be an engineer. <laughs> to be an engineer, she's going to say uh, uh, a mouth that can fit a, a lot of penis in it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take ourselves a little break <laughs> until <laughs> next time. This Adam Crawl for Dr. Drew saying, Mahalo. Some family members, of course. You stinking whore. No, oh, that wasn't me judging. That was. Uh, <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.